Hey everyone, today we're going to show you how to get the most enjoyment out of your salmon. There are five different Pacific salmon species coming back into the Fraser River and the best one you can get are the Sokai salmon. And these fish are running right now and we have really high abundance of uh, fish coming back this year. There's 25 million uh, fish estimated coming through the Fraser River in July and August. We didn't actually catch these fish ourselves, we actually went down to the Stevenson Dock and bought these ones. So, you know, when, when you can't catch your own fish, it's best to support your local commercial fishermen. Um, these are freshly caught in the last 32 hours, in the last opening, and uh, you can tell by looking at the eye, the eye is really glassy and the, uh, the you can always feel the flesh is very solid, it's not coming apart yet, so that's always signs of really nice fresh salmon. And also the scales as well, if you look at the surface of the fish, the scale is very silvery and very shiny. That, and those are typ the typical signs you want to look for when you, you're buying fresh fish. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to um, fill, fillet the fish. Um, we've already gutted this fish earlier, so um, and that's usually a pretty easy job. You just slit your knife through um, across the abdomen and pull the guts out and pull the gill out, and that will be it. So the first thing we do is to fillet the fish, and let's go. Once you have your fish in your cutting board, so the very first thing you do is you'll have to cut the head off. And usually I do this by just going behind the gill plate or going behind the uh, pectoral fin, which is this one right here. And just make one incision all the way across. Like so. And we'll just put the head on the side for now and uh, we'll talk about what we can do with that later on. And then, depending on where you right-handed or left-handed, um, you want to position the fish uh, correctly before you lay it. So the way I like to do is, I like to position my fish this way because I'm right-handed. So I hold, I hold the uh, fish down like that one hand and just kind of, when you fillet it, you want to go as close to the spine as possible and just make a really nice excision right into it. Just run against the spine, you can feel it. And move your hand as well. But don't move it into the path of the knife so you don't end up cutting yourself. I've done that several times in the past. And that's one fillet. So that's one side of the fish. Very nice, beautiful looking fillet. Um, some people like to cut the ribs off as well when they're filleting the fish. I like to keep them on just so you can keep the meat intact. and. Um, also, if you keep if you cutting ribs off, you tend to lose quite a bit of meat as well, and that's a bit of a waste. So we'll put that aside as well, and we'll flip the fish over, and we'll do the other side. Okay, so that's the second side of the fish, and we'll put that aside as well. So once you have the two fillets, usually I just lay it up across the cutting board with the skin side down and I'll cut this into several sections. So depending on how big you want it, usually um, with the fish that size I'll cut into three sections and serve it like that. So one section would be, one piece of fish would be for one person uh, per meal. Okay, now we have the leg cut up in three sections. One thing to note is that the second half of the fish typically don't have any bones. So if you are someone who would prefer not to pick out bones out of your mouth while you eat, this is the part you want to be eating. Whereas if you don't mind, you know, eating and picking out bones while you eat, the, the front part is definitely for you because that's also the fattest part of the fish. And now you're left with this skeleton right here. So you have the spine with a bit of meat um, attached to it uh, right across the body. And what do you do with it? Do you throw it away? Well, you can, but um, I like to keep it for something else. What I'll do is I usually cut this into sections. Into small sections like that. And you can either make fish uh, stock with it, you know, the, a, a soup base, or you can even just, I like to um, Salt, salt the fish and just season it and then just 
kind of lightly pan fry it because there's actually quite a bit of meat on it. I mean, plus you don't eat the bones, but you can pan fry it and just kind of pick pick the uh, meat right off it um, quite easily once that's done. So here we have the sections of the um, of the leftovers right here, and we have the head right here as well. And this you can with the head you can cut into two parts and. Um, use that as a soup base as well. And this part right here, this pectoral fin part is actually really fat and you can grow it up, you can do whatever with it. But the point is, you know, you don't really want to waste too much fish when you have, when you pay good money for it. Okay, so now we have the fish cut up. So the next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll grow it up and we'll serve it for dinner. It's almost dinner time and now we're going to prepare and season the two pieces that we'll be baking tonight. There are hundreds of different recipes when it comes to cooking salmon, but it really comes down to personal preference. This is actually just one way that we do it quite often because it's really easy and it's really tasty. There are three main ingredients when it comes to seasoning in this recipe. Salt, pepper and dill. Finally, once you have all your seasoning on the fish, you can put some diced onion on top of it and drizzle the fish with some olive oil before it goes in the oven. So once you have the fish ready, you can go straight into the oven. I usually bake it at 380 Fahrenheit and I usually give it about 10 to 15 minutes depending on how thick the fish is. Then while we wait, we're gonna get some vegetables. So with our salmon, we have some zucchinis and cherry tomatoes which are freshly picked from our vegetable garden and we're just gonna uh, lightly stir fry these two with some onions and olive oil. Let's check out fish. Ooh, steamy hot. And the fish looks done. So they have it, a simple, tasty salmon dish with fresh local ingredients. If you have a salmon recipe, please send us an email as well or make a comment in this video. For more information on swell fishing in BC, please check out our website at www.fishingrun.com.